Good afternoon all. My name is Romain Orquet and I am the co-founder of Far Engineering Consultancy Studio Fahrenheit. Today I represent a group of engineers and doctors who decided two years ago roughly to embark in an adventure to democratize in France the use of computer modeling applied to evacuation. We present to you, uh, for today's purpose, our initial piece of work that compares the evacuation time from an office building in Paris against a number of numerical models and analytical approach. You have to understand that in France the fire regulations are only prescriptive when it comes to evacuation. This often leads to many exits with a large combined width, essentially due to the cumulative rule in the way the regulations calculate egress. In other words, you add all occupants of the building together and use that number of occupants to size the exits, especially at the ground floor and also the stairs, assuming all occupants arrive at the same time at the same location. Not very scientific, is it? But quite dimensioning, as you can imagine, therefore ultra safe. The problem is that these calculations are not developed for large crowds. If you imagine the cumulative rule approach being used to design a stadium, you end up with more stairs than you have seats. So with the um, Rugby World Cup coming in 2023 in Paris and the Olympic Games in 2024, we really need to think differently. So let's assess all the means of designing egress. As mentioned before, uh, the, this is a large collaborative approach between most of the French uh, sector players. We have 10 organizations involving 17 participants, so lots of brain matter to play with. The parties involved vary from academics, universities, uh, to research and testing labs, design consultancies and uh, fire brigades, all working together towards the same goal. Instead of inventing a fictive building to run our modeling on, uh, we decided to approach uh, the operator of a very large office building in Paris, 20,600 square meters roughly total area, uh, designed to cater for uh, 3,350 people. That's not a high-rise building, it's only 10 storey high including a basement. So that represents quite an interesting crowd within a confined uh, environment. The operator typically undergoes two full-size evacuation drills per year uh, and we attended the one in November 2019. On drill day, the building had an occupancy of 1,350 people, which is about 40% of the building capacity. So you can see a typical uh, upper floor plan here uh, on the screen, alongside the um, occupancy distribution uh, across the floors during the drill. In total, we had uh, 20 people on our side from our respective organizations uh, who attended the drill on the day. Uh, in order to, to witness what was going on and to make some recordings. Occupants of the building were informed of the day, uh, of the drill, but not of the time. There is uh, very good CCTV coverage in that building, uh, except inside the stairs. So we decided to fit stair C here on the right, uh, with, three, uh, with three portable cameras installed at three different levels in order to witness emerging flows inside the stairs as well as congestion. Um, now, the building is huge. CCTV coverage uh, footage is only, uh, remains only available, the recordings, for a month. And uh, the exercise was our first trial together. So we, we had to focus on specific areas of the building rather than scatter around and, uh, and disperse ourselves trying to catch everything. That was just impossible. So the evacuation time is recorded in the end, or, or before you hear, seven minutes to outside and eight and a half to the assembly point. The assembly point is a very large open area, uh, just literally at the rear of the building uh, on the right side of the screen here. The evacuation modeling approach involved a range of computer models, the list of, list of which you can see on the screen and one analytical approach based on uh, cut compliant egress calculations. So three of these models are commercially available, uh, Pathfinder, FDS Evac and Building Exodus, whilst uh, the two others are more academic and uh, currently still under development. So let's now review the input and output data of each model. 
No need, I believe, to present Pathfinder at an FMTC conference. Uh, we had two uses uh, for the Pathfinder model. And uh, it has to be noted that the initial distribution of occupants on the different floors and in, in the rooms of each floor is based on observations made at the evacuation drill. So we, we had the same distribution for the first run across all the models. Each user then undertook additional uh, simulations and decided to, to change some of the parameters, um, such as occupant distribution. So whilst we decided to adopt uh, some similar input data, we also wanted to give some freedom to, uh, to the users to, to allow for user interface into the modeling results. So these Pathfinder results uh, indicate a longer total egress time uh, expressed, explained, in our opinion, uh, by the way that the software treats congestion. In that case, the default SFP speed slash density um, profile was used. We also noted that the free walking speeds were lower in the model than during the drill. Pathfinder user 2 obtained fairly similar results to user 1. Uh, the two curves uh, are, are literally on top of each other up until 250 seconds, and then from there they slightly depart from each other. <coughs> The second software we used is the evacuation module EVAC of FDS, which is developed by VTT in Finland. As uh, for Pathfinder, this is a microscopic model where each agent is represented, behaves independently and interacts with each other. There were 20 simulations performed here for a total egress time that is longer than that of the evacuation drill. The main assumptions for these differences are um, an inefficient use of the total stair width available by the model, an increased congestion at each bottleneck because agents try to force their way in, and working speeds or that of the drill, which are already include uh, the congestion phenomena naturally involved in the drill, which is therefore somehow accounted twice. Building Exodus, developed uh, by the University of Greenwich. Uh, there is a stochastic aspect in the way that conflicts are resolved uh, by this model, uh, resulting in the need to run multiple scenarios uh, in order to, um, to obtain uh, accuracy in the output data. So the process adopted here was to run 10 simulations, extract all the output data, and uh, compute the median values uh, as you retain total egress time. Compared to the evacuation drill, building Exodus provided fairly similar results in terms of time. One of its main advantages is the capacity of the tool to make best use of the full stair width. <coughs> Chromosim. Um, Chromosim is an open source library written in Python that includes various crowd motion models. The first one presented here is uh, the compartment model. The model treats the building as a series of nodes uh, and connections between the nodes. The nodes are things like doors and stairs, etc., for which uh, key parameters uh, can be defined, such as, um, uh, such as egress width and floor rates. The computed egress time <coughs> uh, using the compartment model leads to similar uh, results compared with the drill. So fairly close. The second chromosome model is the granular model. It is specifically developed for high density uh, occupations, so stadium, arenas, etc., <coughs> where people are pushing uh, against each other. The velocity of individuals here is prescribed to a maximum value in order to prevent the overlapping of agents. Uh, and the flow rate at doors is not an input, but an output. The total egress time estimated here is 465 seconds, when we include the 50 second per movement time, which is slightly higher than that of the drill. <clears throat> the analytical approach is a fully code compliant approach with French file regulations. Here it's taken from the uh, GA23, which is the section for railway stations, 
<coughs> its, um, uh, its paragraph includes four flow rate data taken from real evacuation events, which was then used uh, as input for, uh, to calculate the egress time. <coughs> the methodology is described here, and as you can see, we take the, uh, the furthest person on the furthest floor, calculate the travel time, queuing time at the doors based on flow rate data, vertical travel time to ground, and from ground to outside, horizontal travel time. We then add all of those times together in order to obtain the evacuation time. Which means we don't cater for congestion uh, inside the stairs or merging flows more importantly which leads to three minutes evacuation time with that removement, so roughly four minutes. But still, it's half the time of the real evacuation drill. <clears throat> Each model is different. For, for some, the input data is actually the output data of others. So for example, Pathfinder defines the flow rate at doors as an input, whilst Chromosim granular, granular model calculates the flow rate as an output. In a view to be able to compare apples with apples, uh, we have agreed to harmonize as much input data as possible. These are visible here on the screen before you. The figure here presents the cumulative exit times for all simulations compared with the evacuation drill. The evacuation drill being the black curve <coughs> on the screen. We note that all the models reproduce the evacuation time uh, of the drill up to circa 4 minutes and then start to, to despair uh, after that. The main reason for this um, in, in, in our view is explained by the way uh, the models treat merging flows, congestion and the use of the clear exit widths completely differently. In addition to reviewing the evacuation times, the total times, uh, we looked closely at very specific areas of the building. We had 18 in total. <clears throat> Here, area number 18 on the left side is taken at floor 8, which is the highest level. So in this area, uh, we have no merging flows. We only have uh, the small occupancy of level 8 gathering. And as we can see here, the estimated number of people by the models is uh, fairly common across all the models. So uh, that, that's, uh, that's quite interesting. Area number one on the right side is located on the ground floor within uh, an area that is uh, where a number of stairs discharge and is densely used at some point in the evacuation. <coughs> so as you can see here, <coughs> because we've had many people arriving at different times, merging flows, congestion and all of that, and because the models treat those aspects of phenomena differently, we end up having completely different results depending on the model used. <coughs> this table provides a summary of the egress times across the various stairs of the building. And again, some interesting data here, because um, staircases A, B, C and D were quite densely used during the evacuation drill, whereas uh, the Caesar stairs were, not, uh, were very lightly used. And when we look at the evacuation times for the Caesar stairs, they are fairly similar to each other, depending on the model. <clears throat> because there is no much merging flows and congestion. Whereas the results differ uh, greatly um, in the highly dense uh, staircases, because there is congestion and merging flows. The analytical uh, approach was not compared here with the other results, because as mentioned before, the merging flows are not considered at all in that approach, and therefore we are not comparing apples with apples anymore. So um, this exercise was uh, the first uh, undertaken with uh, the group and, uh, and uh, at the building. Uh, the objective here was not to validate the tools, because we believe this is way too early for this. We will do that uh, during the next steps. As uh, the models approach uh, the pre-movement time in different manners, we purposely chose to add the pre-movement time uh, at the end as a fixed value on top of all the results. This is not fully representative of the reality uh, because during the drill the pre-movement times varied between 10 seconds up to 80 seconds. Um, and finally, the walking speeds included in the models were those measured during the drill, which already somehow include congestion effects. 
So the models have been penalized twice by using this data and on top of that adding the congestion um, rules to, to the models. So there is definitely room for improvement. In conclusion, uh, we can say that the French code compliance approach using GA23 hand calculations is not appropriate for multi-story buildings where there is merging flow which is expected to occur. Uh, it's, uh, it's a good model when, uh, when you move even multiple levels but where, where people don't merge together. So we plan uh, in attending future evacuation drills to collect additional data and focus on other areas of the buildings, ideally with an increased occupancy. Uh, we will equip, uh, equip additional stairs with video recording equipment to better understand the merging flows as well. The ideal in COM for us would be to find the perfect input parameters uh, for each model so that the congestion and merging flows can be accurately estimated. That would be ideal. We also aim to be in a position eventually to validate the models used. So thank you all for your attention. Uh, for your attention, uh, all questions and suggestions are more than welcome, and uh, I hope you find that useful. Thank you. There they go. Hello, everybody. Welcome over from the stage. Hello from France. Yeah, great. Thanks for joining us today. Um, so any questions? Feel free to post those here in chat, and we'll get to those as we go. And I did, I did have a question uh, because you were using some different tools um, and you made a comment about building Exodus that you think part of what helped that, there were two parts. One, it was kind of stochastic, so you had to run a little bit to get, I think, the results um, that you were looking for, I guess, or, or to be within the parameters. But also you mentioned just that they were able to use the full stair width. And I wondered what that meant if it was they didn't use a boundary like a boundary condition on the stairs, or what? Where you think that that factor played a role, and and how so? Okay. Um, well, f first of all, um, as as you may have noted, there there were uh, a lot of participants in in that project, and I myself was not the mm -hmm. one using all of the software. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm more of a Pathfinder user than the building Exodus user. So I'll try to answer that as well as possible. Uh, my understanding of my colleague using building Exodus is that he was able to uh, to maximize the spread of people uh, on the side edges of the stairs based on the um, of the physical uh, evacuation that we saw during the drill. Mm -hmm. So instead of using potentially large boundary conditions where people would not stick on the walls, where we could observe that some people did, so we were able to to, to force the model to to replicate as much as possible that phenomena. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Um, Enrico asks or says this type of round robin studies are so interesting. My guess for higher adherence to the drill of the fine network model is that it requires flows to be specified by the user rather than being predicted by the movement model. Uh, do you think this was the main cause? So, yeah. Um, I think uh, the, the main cause for what? Um, for, for the different results? I, I think so. Yeah, I, I'm, okay. he, Enrico can clarify here if that's incorrect. Right. <laughs> uh, I think the one, one of the main reasons is that the, um, first of all, it's, it's our first trial at uh, trying to, to use all those models in a comparable manner against a real evacuation drill. So there is a lot of refinement work to be done, which is definitely our next steps. Uh, and secondly, we, um, we, we, we are quite glad that the evacuation modeling uh, indicated such differences because it starts to allow us to understand that the models treat uh, merging conditions and con uh, convergence in, in different manners. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, th that, was, that was an interesting starting point, definitely. Yeah, so is then, this for the fine model? Yeah, for the the fine network model, closer was matching closer to the drill. So that was the you were correct with your assumption there. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you feel an openness from French authorities to such simulations compared to the situation a few years ago? Are the codes adapted <laughs> to this? Well, we 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 hope so. That's the whole purpose of us doing that exercise. Uh, we. If you want a country's authority to uh, to regulatory uh, open uh, the, the market to performance-based design, you need to demonstrate to the authorities that there are some capable um, capable uh, companies or labs or whoever practitioners on the same market in order to 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 do it in a safe manner. Mm -hmm. So it, it's really the initial steps for us to do this. 
uh, the, the plan. That's why we have most of the sectors, uh, sector players involved, including some representatives of the French authorities, in order to, to pass the message up, upstairs that, uh, look, guys, we are here. We have demonstrated to you over the years we're capable of doing it. Now, please open the market. Mm -hmm. And the second answer to that question is, in France, there has been a new law uh, coming out uh, last year, which is called ESOC. And um, the purpose of that law is to allow the construction industry to to innovate and to develop some more. So, as part of this uh, of this law, um, as of uh, July next year, there will be a more opening to performance based design in the country. Mm. And we want to be ready with evacuation to to uh, to hit that deadline. Uh, another question for the Pathfinder runs: Was that in SFPE mode or steering mode for the study? Uh, I believe it may be specified in the article we published, but okay. I believe it was the SFP mode, yes. Okay, and that will make a difference Similarly. also in some uh, results. It tends to be, a, in, in many cases, more conservative uh, controlling flow than the, um, than the steering mode, so. Yeah, and, and again, uh, early stages, first stages of our study, uh, what, what we are planning is to actually test all the sensitivity parameters exactly like the SFP slash uh, versus steering mode. Uh, we, we will play with all those parameters one by one, not in a combined manner, in order to make sure we assess the uh, the, uh, the correct parameters, but that's that's part of our Excellent. future Excellent. That's good. That's good to know. So we'll take a look for your paper uh, that'll be published on the site uh, very soon. So uh, just a comment. About... Sure. So hopefully we have yeah. a slot. Well, in make the sure next you get your abstract. FMTC presentation. <laughs> we'll be happy to take a look. Your results. So, uh, only if the sure. results are favorable for Pathfinder, right? Like, <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, all right. So uh, I don't see any other questions or anything here. Uh, just a compliment there about awesome presentation. So again, thank you for that. Um, and uh, we hope to see you again. Enjoy the conference. And thank you for your time here for the Q&A. Appreciate it. Yep, take care. Thank, thank you very much. Cheers.